Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Benefits of Futures. I'm your host, Tom Schneider, CMT with Ninja Trader, and really excited to talk with my co host, Anthony Crudelli, about Bollinger Bands today. But before we do that, I do want to remind everybody that futures and options trading contain substantial risk, not for every trader. You could potentially lose all or even more than all of your initial investments. So we suggest you use risk capital. What is risk capital? It's money that you can afford to lose, doesn't extend your retirement horizon, doesn't change your lifestyle. We also want to remind everybody that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And that what we'll be talking about today should neither uh, should not be taken as trade advice nor financial recommendations, but should be used for educational purposes only. And with that, I'd like to welcome Anthony Crudelli. Anthony, how are you doing today? Good, Tom. How are you? Doing doing awesome. What's the weather like where you are? I'm always fascinated because I love I love the area you're in and I always want to visit. So I love hearing about the weather down in uh, Florida. Yeah, for those of you that don't know, I'm in Naples, Florida, and it's really, it's, it's like living in the tropics here. <laughs> it, <laughs> rain, it rains every day in the summer, and but it's perfect in the winter. So uh, it's, it's doing what it does. It's 85 by the time it gets to this time of the day, and then it rains in the middle of the day, every single day. I but could get fun. used to that. I could get used to that. That's great. It's good nap weather. After the yeah. markets close, it's like, I'm always ready to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. So what's been going on? What's new? No, so today we're going to talk about Bollinger Bands, and you know, this is actually the indicator that I would say over 20 years ago, I think it was like my second or third years when I finally like found the indicator that I was really interested in, because we all go through that right time at the beginning, we go through like a thousand indicators, right. Right? we're just clicking on everyone, and then we think we found it, we're like, this is it, look at this is working, this is unbelievable, I'm going to make tons of money. I think you trade it and then two weeks later it doesn't work and you're like okay and then you're like do i go back to the drawing board and we most of us just keep going back and back and back and what i found interesting about bollinger bands to me was i found this coming out of a time where i was really just searching for something to help me with a massive weakness of mine and as a day trader my weakness was trend days right when the market was uh, maybe not necessarily just a single trend day, but when the market was just trending, grinding up, grinding up, grinding up, grinding up, uh, or even down. You know, we didn't have many down days when I first started in the mid 90s. It was almost all up. But uh, that was something that was very difficult for me because as a day trader, and especially obviously with futures, it's just as easy to get short as it is long. So a lot of my setups from my other indicators would give me a short setup because the market would be going higher and that would be the time I would get to resistance. And in a bull market, you keep getting to resistance. In a bear market, you keep getting to support, but yet you should be trading the opposite. You should be trading towards resistance in a bull market and towards support in a bear market, right? But psychologically, what happens is that you feel like you've missed it. So you're always looking for that counter trend trade. So the Bollinger Bands to me was the, was the one thing where I looked at it and I said, you know what? This can actually help me identify what type of day it is before we even get into the day. And I can identify if we are just in a trend up type market, a sideways market, or a trend down type market. So on my bigger picture, I could have something that just showed me what the current environment was. And then I could take that, that, that bias, we'll call it, and then take that to my intraday charts and then go from there. So I know that's, but to me, I just wanted to talk about like really that backstory of how I got here. And it, it just came from that weakness. Right. And, and that's great. And I totally agree with you about being um, enamored of so many different tools because there are so many tools and so many, um, these tools have been developed by people like you and me, right? Traders, and they they have ideas. They they get something that they think is great, and they put the time in to make those tools fine tuned. And so now you've got this 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 whole toolbox that you could use, and each one seems shiny and new, right? But then you know it's interesting. Bollinger bands, I think, are really interesting because they do a couple things, right? Trending days. It's solved that you know, and we'll look at it. 
solving that problem of of identifying trending days and and how to trade, but it also reflects or, or, or reflects the market with um, respect to volatility too. So it's kind of like a it has it's like a, almost like a a leather man. It's got multiple tools in one. Yeah, you know that's one of the things about Bollinger Bands too is that there's all there's all sorts of well with all indicators there's there's multiple settings you can go you can go to you know how many standard deviations out do you want to go I think also for traders it gives a good visual because I'm going to talk about this today when we get to the charts I look at how things are boxed out I think that's extremely important so like with a Bollinger Band you know I know a lot of traders that will use like maybe a, just a two standard deviation or even a one. And when the market goes and pierces it, they could use that as resistance or support. So there's lots of different ways to go about it. And one thing I will say before we get into the charts today is, you know, when you look at indicators for everybody out there, I think that go into the, you don't have to go into the using the indicator in the traditional by the book way. You know, I think that some of these indicators, even the creators of, of a lot of these indicators would say that, uh, you know, they had this idea of how they wanted the indicator to work and then they built it. But then as traders, you go by, as time goes by, you look at it and you're like, oh, wow, this actually works in this way too. So you don't necessarily have to go buy the book with these things. These can be things that you look at and you look at for a specific setup from you just understanding or just from learning how the nuances, I will say, of that indicator and that market, right? Because to me, you don't have to just, if, if you wanted to just go buy everything by the book, then you're just going to get maybe by the book results, right? You're not going to get, you know, something that, you know, I think as a day trader, you always need to be the best executor you can of your strategy. And if you're just going to go buy the book on a regular indicator, then you, you could just almost automate it. But I think as traders, as people who go out there and execute, you find these nuance, you find the context of the situation, and you go in and you execute it better. And so I just wanted to say that because I think it's so important when you look at your indicators to have an open mind and, and maybe you find something that's never been used before on an indicator that's already created. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, I've said this before watching you, your, your um, execution, I shouldn't say execution, the way you use your tools, I've learned a lot and I've been doing this for many years as well. You're always learning. It's the same thing, right? You're always learning how these tools can identify something that maybe it wasn't intended for and, you know, if it works, it works. And, and this is something that, you know, I always ask uh, people, do you, do, when, when you're looking at a Bollinger Band or when you, you said, hey, this might fit my trading style, did you do any kind of testing? And we don't have to go down this road, but is it more of a feel and experience with you or did you do some um, analysis of the history? Well, on the initial look, no, because on the initial look, and when we go to the charts here in just a second, I'll, I'll talk about how I was just looking for something to identify environment. So this was something that I wasn't looking for for a signal base. So the, what I'm going to show everybody today is something that it's not a signal driven strategy using Bollinger Bands. Now, I, you can take it to another level. I've actually done this with you on the show where you could add, you know, a FIB tool to it, or you could add an anchored view app, or even like today, I'll have the RSI on my daily chart. And I'll go over kind of like how I look at that and how maybe it can turn into a signal. But it's just about the mindset of what is the market's environment? Because, and you and I, I think we even talked about this last week, look at how different of an environment we are right now. You can go back from really July, all the way through the middle of August, we are acting like we are in a bull market. A lot of what we were like last year. Then you go back to like end of May, middle of May to July was very much a sideways type market where everyone's like, okay, is the low in? Oh, we're going to rally. Oh, no, we're not. We're breaking again. Oh, no, wait, we're the lows in. We're rallying. And then it's back and forth. So it was a very two-way market. And then you go back to the beginning of the year, it was very much a dominant bear market. And so instead of going by a trend line or something else, or just people saying the market's down X percentage, the Bollinger Band helps me see visually going into the day, what type of environment we're in. And then from there, you know, after what I show people today, you can build different strategies on it. And I have, and that's when I went in and tested. Got it. Got it. So, you know, why don't we just jump right into the charts? I'm, I'm staring yeah. at a chart that people can't see. I'd love them to see this. Okay. So let's go to the charts here. Actually, let's just go to the whole year, I think. So I have the whole year up here. 
And, you know, I use the, the, the micro NASDAQ here. It's the market, it's the futures market I trade the most. So I just like using it because you know, I, I pretty much can follow along with everything I've done this whole year and kind of um, go over how I've identified an environment. And the one thing that I look for when I'm looking at Bollinger Bands is this. So what do we have in front of us? Let's go over the settings real quick because I think it's important that everybody knows exactly what I'm saying. So when you look at the Bollinger Bands, I have a 20 period three standard deviation Bollinger Band. This is not the standard setting. Um, I change this setting because number one, uh, when you look at standard deviations, when you're trading equity indexes like the S&P or the NASDAQ or the Russell, I like a, a wider de deviation when I'm looking at a Bollinger Band because they're very volatile, right? If I'm looking at 10 year, I might go to 20 period, two standard deviation because it's not as volatile as the market, right? So for the 20 period, three standard deviations, what I use for equity indices, crude oil, gold, and anything that just moves quite a bit. Um, if it moves less, I'll take it down. I also wanted to mention that I use uh, to calculate, and I've talked about this before, and I think anybody out there, you guys, if you're using Ninja, this is one of the things when you go to the setup, you'll see this drop down. You see on bar close on each tick on price change. I believe that using, and, and when I'm using any indicator, I want it to calculate on each tick, especially for you day traders out there. If you're active, you want the indicator to be updating on each tick because you want an accurate reading. Also, I don't use the middle Bollinger Band because I, I'm a, I don't need it. It's just a moving average. Um, so to me, I just make it transparent and, and that's all I use for the basic settings. And this is my default settings for the Bollinger Bands on here. Now, also I add a 10 period moving average, it's just a simple moving average. And that's what I use over what the middle Bollinger Band would be. And this is just a preference because I am an intraday to really few days of holding. Uh, that's my whole pattern, my whole time of a trader. So a 10 day moving average gives me a good gauge of just the past two weeks of trend, five days per week, 10 day moving average, a good gauge of what it is. And also I have the RSI on here. And when you look at the RSI, I know we're talking about Bollinger Bands today. I just wanted to show I'm using the basic settings, except the fact that on Calculate, I have on each tick, because once again, I feel that that is important when I'm looking at uh, an RSI. So here we are with a daily micro NASDAQ futures chart. And the one thing that I look for when you go back to the beginning of this year is, so let's identify environment. There's three types of environments, right? There's bull, bull market, bull trend, bear, or sideways. How do I use a Bollinger Band to identify that? Well, what I look for, look at the beginning of 2022. The Bollinger Bands were really sideways here. If you go back to the left side of the chart, all the way to the left. And then we got below the 10 period moving average and the mouth of the Bollinger Band started to open up on the bottom and the top started to open up as well. So what does that tell us? And we, we talked a little bit about this already, I think, Tom, is that you said it also gives like a gauge of volatility. So as the Bollinger Band is opening, it's saying that we are expanding volatility. That means that, you know, anytime we're breaking out of a range or if we're moving in one direction, and if the mouth of the Bollinger Band is open, volatility is expanding, that gives that range the power to go further uh, than maybe one thinks, right? So when that mouth is open, it is telling me that we have a trend because we're below the 10-day moving average. The mouth of the Bollinger Band is going uh, up and down, and we're staying below or above, in this case, a bear trend below the 10-day moving average. Now, how do I know? So I should say this. Now that I've identified it's a bear environment, which was really probably the middle of January, can't get above the 10 day and we're just grinding lower with the mouth open. Intraday, my bias is short. I don't need to look at anything else. I don't need to go back. And, and this is where I'll even go back further and go back and look. I don't have that much data on here, but if you go back and look, you could see the market was trending higher to that point. So going to that point, the market is just coming off of all time highs, right? So at that moment, you're like, it's still technically a bull market, but the environment changed within a bull market similar to what we're seeing now, we'll get to current day. So it turns into a bear look for me because we're below the 10 day simple moving average and the mouth of the Bollinger Band is open. So that tells me only look at shorts. Not necessarily only, but it's going to be way heavier on the short side as an intraday trader that I'm going to look at shorts. And that's this, where my position sizing would come in and say, if I get a short signal, I'm going to be aggressive with that. 
If I get a long signal, I'm not going to be aggressive. Big, small, not at all. We talked about this last week too. I know on the short side, I can be aggressive because I have this um, confirming to me that in this time frame, we are in a bear trend. So it's just about identifying the environment. The trend changed in, in this way from a sideways to down because of that. So does that make sense, Tom? I just want to pause and maybe just see what you think about that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, and you you hit on something that I think is key, which is we were in a bull market. We were making new all-time highs. And you're not identifying what overall trend is. You're talking about the current trend. And of course, when you're in a in a a, a bullish trend and, and it switches to bear eventually, or let's say a bull market switches to a bear market, that just doesn't happen with the snap of the finger. So you have to identify these smaller term trends. You're not talking about the overall what you would hear on TV, bear or bull market, right? Exactly. I mean, people say, well, we finally got into a bear market. And it's so funny. I mean, I see a lot of people say, well, we finally identify we're in a bear market, the bear market's over. A trader's job is not identifying a bull or bear market from what the perception of what the media does. Our job is to execute from level to level, price to price. We have to execute the journey. So people can still argue that we're still in a bear market. Okay, I I don't really care, but it, in, in the scheme of things, to me, it doesn't really, it's not going to really impact the way I'm going to trade, right? So when I come into the day, I want to go, what is the current environment? Now, before I get to the current environment, I actually want to go back and talk about a sideways environment to how you identify that. Because how do you transition over from that bearish look to a sideways or potentially a bullish look? So when we had this lows made end of January into February, as you could see here, the bottom peak of that Bollinger Band started to point up and that top peak started to come back in. So when the mouth of the Bollinger Band was opening, what do we say, Tom, right? Volatility's expanding. But when all of a sudden the, the Bollinger Bands think that the low is made, right? Because it's just automated the way that the indicator's working. The Bollinger Bands start to come back in. What's happening? Volatility is contracting. So what does that indicate? In any trend, most of the time, when volatility starts to contract, you get a sideways market, possibly mean reversion, right? I mean, you may not get a massive mean reversion. And it doesn't mean necessarily that we will get mean reversion, but you might just be consolidated um, and you're, you're expecting some pullback within that trend. So when you see those Bollinger, bottom Bollinger Band pull in and the top pulls back, and then I see this 10-day moving average start to get flat, now I know it is a two-way trade, right? So I go from being primarily looking at shorts to now, oh, that's changed. Now the 10-day moving average is flat. Bollinger Bands are pointing in. We're contracting. Now expect it to be a little bit choppy. When does that change again, right? So now I look at it basically like this. So I'm actually going to draw, um, I'm going to go some horizontal lines here. And I think this is just make it easier to see. And what I'll do is I'm going to put horizontal lines on the Bollinger Band peaks. Now, why would I do that? Well, I did that because to me, it boxes out that volatility of that range of that cycle, right? So the Bollinger Band started to come back in. At that moment, I looked at it and said, you know what? That peak on the top, that pink on the bottom represents a turning point on the indicator, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe not necessarily for the market, but for now, it's saying that volatility is no longer expanding. So it's going to be difficult for the market, if you believe in your indicator, like I believe in this, to expand outside of that price range. And a lot of times, those peaks are what I call unfinished business, meaning that the market might go back down and just test that peak, which it did here multiple times. And I look at this as maybe not necessarily support, but I look at that and say, as long as price stays within there and the Bollinger Bands stay within that previous peaks, that is my range. So I could visually think and see where the range of that market is. So until the market starts to get outside of that range of that Bollinger Band peak from when that initial move in, uh, occurred, I think we are in a sideways to two-way market. And when you look here really from February, end of Jan, up until April, it was a mean reversion two-way market. We made lower lows, but you had basically a double bottom. You had a lot of chop. And you could use that 10-day moving average, which I like, to really help you intraday 
identify which side of the two-way market you want to be in. So maybe Tom, I don't know if I just I want to identify the two-way and just see what kind of what you think about that. But when you say two-way, let's expand on that a little bit. Are you are you thinking that you're going into the trading day and there's no bias favor, you know, there's no favored bias, and you're looking for maybe some uh wave action or your your trade there's range bound trading so you go into range bound trading mode and you're looking to identify where there might be maybe intraday highs and lows that you're going to trade between is that the case and it, certainly you're not as aggressive aggressive as if you were biased to either side that's why i wanted to pause and talk to you because that's a great question i mean i think this is this is the point it's like what's my mindset coming into the day in the bear trend I could be aggressive with my shorts because if I get a short signal intraday, that's confirming with primary trend of, of my time frame. Right. Next is I know to be small on the longs and a bear trend. So I already know big, small, not at all. I wait to see what my intraday strategy says. Now I go into a sideways market. First thing my thought is take my position sizing down because now really expect it to be whippy and choppy because the bulls and the bears are fighting for this time frame of control. So we're going through a time where the market doesn't truly have leadership, right? You're not smooth with the Bollinger Bands open below a 10 day, smooth above the 10 day moving average with the Bollinger Bands open. You're in a time where Bollinger Bands are choppy and confused. And most likely that's gonna feed into all of the other strategies because you can see it. When you're choppy on a daily, it's gonna feed into choppiness in the short term. So I know be smaller and I'm going to be more in what I would consider a scalp type mode. Try and trade the edges, meaning like wait for the ranges to set up a little bit. Don't be in a hurry for any direction. Have some confirmation and that's the side I want to trade. But I'm not really weighing too much on either side because really intraday, anything could happen and, and, and that could happen on any single day. But more or less, I'm, I'm going into the day saying small on both sides wait for my intraday strategy to tell me what it's showing me. Got it. And and that's a case where you talked about mean reversion earlier. That might be something where you might use the Bollinger Band intraday as a mean reverting tool when you're in a sideways market on the on the longer term. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, let, let's go to the bull trend. And actually, then I'm going to go to my short term uh, market, uh, short term chart to show you something. So let's talk about this recent low here. So what we talked about, what, what I saw here was when this Bollinger Band started to form, if you go towards middle of June, July, um, we started to, we made a lower low. You could see the Bollinger Band started to come down, make that peak. It started to come back in. And then right towards the middle of July, we started to get above the 10-day moving average. And we've been going up ever since with what's happening. The, the, pre, the, the current Bollinger Band is taking out the previous peak. Volatility is expanding and we're above the 10-day moving average. So right now, my strategy, the only thing I'm looking for, and it's pretty simple, is I'm looking for longs because the bulls still have control. How do I know that that will change? It goes back to when that Bollinger Band starts to come up and starts to come back in, where they start to contract. Then I see, what does it do with the 10-day moving average? Maybe we go back and do what we've done in these previous times, where all of a sudden that happens. And if you go back and look in May and in June, that happens, it shows like a kind of a choppy time. And then we wait to see what the next direction is. If the Bollinger Band starts to expand up again above the 10 day, maybe it's higher. If it starts to expand while we're below the 10 day, maybe it's lower. But each through each environment, I am on, I'm on the pulse of what's happening now, right? And so that, that's an important aspect of this, right? So it's, it's just about identifying these bull, bear, or sideways environments. Right, exactly. And and you could almost see, you know, during that downtrend into June, when we first crossed above that 50, I'm sorry, that 10 day moving average towards the end of May, yeah, you know, right, that right. was kind of the the hint, you know, with the with the bands contracting that certainly that were sideways. Um, and it stayed that way as we as we traded around that 10 day. And then once we came out of that and we started consistently trading above the 10 day. That's when the bands really separated, right? Mid July. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah. No, I like I like that. That's great. It just it's just like I said, this is not a trading strategy. This is a mindset going into the day. Who's got control? You can hear all you want, and anyone can tell you anything that they want. And for me, I like it. And one other thing I add here that I really like is why I keep up the RSI. And I just want to go over this real quick because I've talked about this previously in the past. Look when we're making those lows and those Bollinger bands are peaking and coming back in. You have an oversold RSI that stayed oversold for several days. When it finally got out of being oversold and that Bollinger Band came in, that's confir uh, it's confirmation. You know, look for times where we're getting overbought. Like right now, we're just getting near the overbought on the RSI, but we're still expanding with the, with the Bollinger Band. And most people would be way too early here getting short. Oh, we're almost overbought. You know, so this is something where I look at when you take one of your momentum tools, you can add something to this just to help identify the environment. And the RSI to me and just, is just a very simple, easy tool to help me see that. So I'm not going to just take a short on an overbought. I want to see that Bollinger Band start to come back in. That would be confirmation. Maybe that we are now getting ready to um, rotate over. You know, I look at it like this. Once again, what did I say from the beginning? What's my weakness? Fading moves. You know, the bears, they just want to tell you that this move is wrong. But until price tells us differently, the bulls are right. That's the way I feel about it. Right. And I think you hit upon a key point here, which is not using an indicator alone, right? Just you mentioned yes. the RSI. Just because you're overbought, that's not a trigger. That's not a single signal. It's the alignment of, of, of indicators that help form your bias or help form your mindset going into the trading deck, right? So we're a long way off from using these as signals, uh, especially when we're looking at a daily chart or a weekly chart, even. We're not using them as signals. Yeah, exactly. And I just wanted to go to the short-term chart real quick to kind of give you a gauge as to how I use it. So I'll keep up my RSI. I have the order flow cumulative delta on the bottom. I'm not going to get into that right now, but this is just my standard chart. And many of you who've watched any of these shows before know I like my anchored view app from the regular trading hour open. Uh, we've talked about these before. You can go and see all the shows with Tom and I about what those settings are. But one thing that I look at intraday is if I'm looking for a long or short, it's the same type of mindset, right? If the bottom Bollinger Band is going down and we're going down and all of a sudden I get a trigger long on some something else that maybe I'm looking at, right? And that bottom Bollinger Band starts to come back in on a down move, on a bullish look like we have right now on the daily, that is also supportive of what I'm looking at in, in my bias, right? So I could take that same philosophy, same Bollinger Band, bring that down to a three minute, a five minute, a 30 minute, whatever it is that you're doing, and whatever time frame you're trading. And when that Bollinger Band is open and it's going in that direction, I don't fade it. When that Bollinger Band starts to close, it tells me that we are potentially boxed in with those peaks. And if I have confirmation from my strategy, once again, it's not a strategy, but it is a confirmation of a trend reversal, which is what we're here to talk about today. And it really helps me. So like even today, you look at it right now, we went back above opening range high, you know, whatever it is going up, mouth of Bollinger Band's going higher. If I'm a bull, I like to see something like that because volatility is expanding on this time frame, and we can keep going up. So I just wanted to use that as a, as a, as a reference to just show that I, you can not only, you don't only have to use it on the daily. It's something you could use even in the shorter term. No, I love it. I love it. Thanks for that. We're, we're just about done uh, running up against time. I do want to um, just make a couple of uh, comments for money, uh, for money, I've seen him in our uh, bookend shows. He says, so helpful, thank you. And then he's talking about changing the studies to every tick instead of on bar close. So thank you for that, Anthony. Uh, Nick Smith says, appreciate the info. Bernie Enlow from the Future Networks Live Trading Group says, hello, cheers. So that's great. Um, and then uh, for money says, I use RSI. Do you use MACD in addition to RSI? Just a question about indicators. You know, I do like the MACD too, but the one thing I will say is don't be redundant on your momentum indicators. And, and Tom, you and I have talked about this as well. You know, if you have a momentum indicator, so like on these charts, I have the RSI. You know, it's funny. It's I, I For a while, I was almost only using the MACD and now I've gone back to the RSI. You know, I think that, I, I do think that they are both so similar in nature I just think that's how you look at the market and, and what really, I would say, fits your eye the best. Because I think most of the time, you're going to get very similar signals. So it's just a matter of sticking with that signal and not looking for 
you know, oh, this one's here, this one's there and thinking too much into it. You know, a lot of trading is just about cutting out some of the other things that you think are really good and just focusing and getting really good at executing the ones you like. Totally agree. Um, thanks for that, Anthony. And uh, we do have poll results. Uh, Mission Control put in a great poll question today. Do you use Bollinger Bands? Of course, you and I would answer yes. Uh, but 30% of you said, of course I do. Uh, 55% said I don't, but maybe I should. And then 15% said Bollinger Bands, explain. So hopefully you can rewatch this event, uh, <laughs> listen to what Anthony has uh, testified to about Bollinger Bands. I think it's compelling. I think it's awesome. Um, and it's always goes by way too fast, Anthony. So if people want to find you uh, in the internets, where would they find you, Anthony? Just go to at Anthony Crudelli on Twitter and go to anthonycrudelli.com. Everything's there. All right. Thank you so much. We're going to take a break from our schedule. We'll see you in three weeks, Anthony. I know uh, uh, next week, I think we're off, uh, was our normal time, but we'll see you three weeks for benefits of futures. And thanks again, Anthony. As always, it's a pleasure to talk to you and have you on the show. And uh, everybody, I would just want to say thank you for chiming in. Thank you for contributing to the discussion. And uh, we'll see you here at the end of the day at bars closing. Have a great trading day. See you, everybody.